All right, folks, welcome back to another interview here at the Impact Lounge. Thank you for listening, whether it's YouTube, iTunes, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Podbean, Stitcher, whatever it is you listen on. Thank you very, very much. On the line, I've got one half of the Desi Hit Squad, or maybe it's one third, one fourth, one fifth. I don't know. We're going to get into that. I've got Rohit Raju here on the line in the place to be. Rohit, welcome to the show. Um, my first inclination was to tell you Happy Father's Day, but you're not a parent, are you? You just have a lot of animals. No, I'm just furry babies. So I'm I'm a pet guy. You got a lot of dogs and cats, right? Well, I have two small dogs and four cats. I mean, like 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 you said, I'm a huge animal person. Last year, I had three. I lost both of my big dogs within a month. One was old, and I was actually at the Impact tapings in Orlando in April when I got a call from my wife and his his liver was failing and he lasted a long time and then he passed in july and then literally almost a month later i took my boxer to the vet because he wasn't eating and i thought it was because the other guy passed and he had a tumor that exploded in his stomach and we literally had to get him put down when i took him just to get a checkup so that that sucked for me but i have two little dogs at the moment i didn't want another dog but the other dog was very small so I said I would take her, and she's such a little terror, and I love her. But uh, two dogs, four cats. Yeah, I actually remember you posting about that on Facebook, and uh, I knew you were, and you were pretty uh, tore up about it. It's always difficult to lose pets. I actually got four cats also and two dogs, so uh, you're in good company. <laughs> yeah, I, I see your pictures, and they always make me laugh. <laughs> yeah, my, my cats follow me everywhere. I think I got two of them laying at my feet here while I talk to you. I actually had to block my door so my dogs wouldn't come in and start barking or doing something of that nature. So, <laughs> Hopefully my dogs shut up here. So we're going to get into talking impact here, talking Desi Hit Squad. I've got some questions about the Desi Hit Squad that I genuinely want to know about. So um, I'm excited to finally be talking to you because we've been trying to plan this for a little while. So we're going to jump right into it. You had your first match as Hakeem Zane on impact tag team partner was Idris Abraham it was a quick match but then you had a rematch on one night only which is actually a phenomenal match I really enjoyed watching that one my first match was with Idris Abraham we tagged up we actually wrestled Laredo Kid and Garza Jr and we did that twice the funny thing is Laredo showed up at the New York tapings and I had a singles with him so we, we've come full circle oh wow oh no shit yeah, so uh, that's actually a really good match. We actually broke the bottom turnbuckle during our match. And it was great for me because it was a singles match, and they let me off the chain. And I just went I went wild, man. And um, I can't wait for people to see that match. And then you pop back up on Global Forged, where they're looking for the next big Impact star. And I want to point out you're still one of the few stars left on the roster from the time you debuted. So there's, o- there's only a handful if we're uh, dating back to that. But talk to me a little bit about the journey, how you had that initial tryout with Impact, how Global Forge came about, and then how you ended up here today. Well, I had first, I, it was weird because I started training. I wanted some, I wanted to up my game a little bit. So I started going out to the um, Border City School, the Can-Am Dojo out there in Windsor. And that is Scott DeMore's place. This was before Scott got back with Impact. And so I just, you know, we always knew one of the best places to go to train was Can-Am Dojo. And one of the better shows in Canada was always the Border City shows. So myself and Jake Something, a.k.a. Jake Diener, who I've known ever since I've, you know, even before I started wrestling, a uh, little known fact there. Um, we went out there and we started to train. Idris had already trained out there, so we'd meet up with him and Joe Coleman uh, of course, those guys make up Hala Beefcake, who have also been on Impact uh, TV before. Great tag team right there. Great dudes. And we just started going out there and training and getting, you know, some new some new skills and some new guidance. And then next thing you know, Scott got back with Impact. And I remember Idris, they, they, the guys got a chance to go up there. I couldn't because I had to work. I was working at a GameStop at that time. And the Nintendo Switch came out, so that was a no-go for me. And then I had an opportunity to go back, I think it was like a couple months later, and I was going to team with Idris. And we were going against Laredo Kid. They go, hey, can you guys do some Lucha stuff? And I've worked with Lucha guys in the past. And, of course, you know, that high-impact that high style, the high-spot style I've, you know, I was doing. 
And so I said, yeah, you know, I can work with those guys. It's, it's not a big deal. I should be able to handle myself with them. And we did. And I for sure, this was when Jarrett was in charge. I remember he pulled me aside and talked to me. He goes, hey, what's your, what's your ethnicity? I said, well, I'm half black and half Indian. And I was, uh, I knew they were looking for some more ethnic people on the show. So I thought that was pretty sweet because they were doing that World Cup, World Cup shortly afterwards. And um, I was saying some stuff, like some phrases in Hindu, and they just liked my style. And I was like, man, this is it. I knew Idris was signed. I was like, man, I might get signed. And it never happened. And then we got a chance to do the Global Forge thing. But to be honest, the Global Forge thing, the only reason why I did it, why we did it, myself and Jake Diener at the time, a.k.a. Jake something, the only reason why we did it was because uh, Pro Wrestling Noah was involved. And that was the reason why we did that. And then I remember Scott saying, hey, you guys don't have to worry about the Impact thing because you guys have already been on Impact TV. You already have your foot in the door. You should come check out so you you know the pro wrestling Noah side of it. And we did. We didn't get picked for that. And then it ended up turning into uh, the Global Forge deal. And we got asked to be a part of that. And I remember cutting promos. I had a match with Shane Strickland at Glory Pro down in the deep Illinois area. You're familiar with that, close to St. Louis. And I cut my promo there. And I cut a couple promos there. And I remember just my entering work. I remember all the judges were like, if there's anyone that has, I thought it would have been myself or Jake getting it or maybe even Mark Wheeler because I thought Mark was young and he had, he was very, they can mold him. And then maybe Jake and I were already pretty seasoned where they may not want us. But Jake's also, you know, Jake just has it anywhere he goes. People just latch on to him. And myself, I was like, well, maybe they'll like me. Maybe they won't. But I couldn't go up there as much as everybody else. And next thing I knew, all the judges were like, if anyone is the perfect package, it's Hakeem. And he can cut the promo. He has the intensity. He has the charisma. And he can work in the ring. And next thing I know, I was being told, hey, you are the winner of Global Forge. And I was like, wow. And I went to the tapings in Ottawa. This I wasn't signed. I got a chance to wrestle Ishimori. And I wrestled Eddie Edwards. And I did a six-man tag. I teamed up with Trevor Lee and uh, Caleb. And we worked against uh, Sanjay, I think Garza Jr. And I can't remember. Maybe it was Ishimori. I can't remember who else it was. Um, and I, that's, that's my bad there. But it was in Ottawa. And then it wasn't until December I got a call from Scott Demore. And he said, hey... Next time I see you, I'm going to be sliding a contract in front of you. You did a good job at the tapings. We liked you at the Global Forge. We're going to give you a shot. We're going to sign you. And then that's how I got signed. And yes, that was as my original moniker, which is Hakeem Zane. I remember you having that match with Shane Strickland, and I was hoping to go to it, and I couldn't. I forgot that part about Global Forge, that pro wrestling Noah was involved. I totally forgot that. I was actually going to ask you, we're going to talk about Jake a little bit and everything too. I was actually going to ask you, was there ever any concern? You, I guess you kind of answered my question, but was there a concern that the new management wasn't going to like you? Because you, Jeff Jarrett was a guy who initially saw something in you and then he was gone. Was, was there any concern for you that the new management wasn't going to take as much interest? Because most of the people Jeff brought on got moved on. Uh, no. You know, Scott always knew I my potential, and, you know, he's always hard on me, which is good. I think he's hard on me because I know him, and which is a good thing. You know, nobody wants it easy, so. But I, I, I kind of was worried. I was like, man, Jeff's gone, so maybe nothing will happen. And, and then I, I said, well, you know, I'll do the Global Forge thing, and I just gave my all, and I ended up winning, so... And then I knew I had another road, you know, to or another struggle, I guess you could say. When I did the Ottawa tapings, I knew I had to go out there and, and do my all. And, you know, I was kind of in my own head during the tapings, and I wasn't my best. But I thought I put on a good enough match with Eddie Edwards. That was for Explosion. I put on a good enough match in the six-man. And I definitely put on a good enough match with Ishimori, and who I love working with. I absolutely love working with Ishimori, one of my favorite people to work with that I did well enough. And I did a couple backstage vignettes. Um, I did one with John Morrison where I was about to cut a promo and he pushes me out of the way or Johnny Impact. And, um, you know, and he thought that was cool. And we always joked about that. Like, hey, man, 
sooner or later I'm going to get my revenge on you and all this other stuff. But he always he, he's one of the coolest guys you'll ever you'll ever meet, man. He always remembered that, so I thought that was sweet. And I knew I gave my all, so it was only like, hey, man, they either they're going to like what they saw or they're not. And I was – I obviously, I wanted to get signed, but I knew I was okay with it because I gave them everything I had, and then it ended up working out in the long run. And then, of course, they needed – when I actually went down, before I went down in January, I heard that they, they were doing the stuff with Sony 6 of India. And that's when I had heard like, hey, we're going to be doing this Indian group. We know you're half Indian. We want to do something with you with that. So I was like, sweet, let's, you know, let's do it. And they changed up the name and did the whole Daisy Hit Squad thing. So, and the rest is history. And we're going to get into the Daisy Hit Squad shortly. But I'm going to back it up just a tad to you winning Global Forged and everything you said, Wrestle Eddie Edwards, Ishimori, the sixth man, you were Hakeem Zane. It initially looked like you were going to be part of the X division. Is that where you had initially thought was probably the direction you were going, that you were just going to compete under Hakeem Zane, X division, and go forward that way? I did, you know, and ex Hakeem Zane is me in a nutshell. It's just me turned up to 15, really. Come out with the leather jacket, come out jaw jacking, talking my mess, and just being me. And then, you know what, Rohit's the same way. If you honestly look at me, there's, you know, one Hakeem Zane rocks the leather, the leather vest, you know, kind of a little tribute to Stone Cold. And then Rohit is more in the traditional Kurt Duff or, you know, Indian garb. But it's still me jaw jacking, shaking my head, doing my thing and being, you know, a little piece of trash, which uh, I, I enjoy being, you know. But um, I honestly thought it'd be X Division. I, I thought once they gave me a microphone that I would grow beyond that because I really feel like I, I excel. And this isn't being egotistical, but I feel I excel more than most people in professional wrestling, any promotion to this day on the microphone if you ever see me on the mic which i honestly haven't been i've been given the mic a couple times on impact and i felt like i did a really great job but i haven't been able to go 100 percent. so i think and i say this in every podcast every interview i do i think once people actually see me do that they're going to be like oh my god this guy's on a whole different level so it's only a matter of time i did a couple promos and stuff like that for the explosion matches I don't know if they ever aired or not, but I remember cutting the promos and the guys recording it were like, man, you can talk. So I think that's one of my strong suits because I think that has – that the interview, the promo is something that is lost in professional wrestling nowadays. So, um, But no, I definitely thought I would have started out X Division and I, I figured my talent would have grown from there. But, you know, sometimes, think, sometimes things take a different direction. It's funny. I feel like you know the questions I'm going to ask you ahead of time. Um, we were going to totally get into the uh, the promos and I actually everything. Don't, but you know, it's, you shoot, you know. <laughs> right, right. It's funny you brought up the Johnny Impact thing because I remember that vividly, and I remember actually being kind of pissed off because I know. I mean, not in a. I was pissed off because I knew your work on the mic, and I was like, yeah. "Oh shit, he's going to cut a promo," <laughs> and it lasted about five seconds, and. um it's funny that you brought that up because I was like ready for you to talk. So as I said, you kind of, it's like, you kind of know what my questions are going to be. Do you wish you could get that mic time? Cause right now with the, the hit squad, obviously Gama Singh does the ring entrance and everything to this point. I mean, have you sat there and be like, I really wished I could have had that mic time or are you just kind of going with the flow and ready for your time? I was going with the flow and now my input, I input, ideas non-stop you'll see a lot of stuff that happens recently that is a lot of my that's coming up that it's my ideas and they tweak it and make it theirs but it's it i plant the seeds and i love the fact that they actually you know take in consideration to some of the stuff the whole thing with the deaners all that stuff was i didn't want it to be a one-off and i wanted it to last number one because jake's one of my best friends and I want to work. We had a match in Ring of Honor one time, one on one, and that was a huge deal for us. And I'm really hoping we can get a match at Impact one on one, because we used to do the backyard together, and we've kind of grown into this business. We went different ways, but we came back. And so, um, if you you've seen, I don't think you were there. We had a match at Glory Pro where we had a standing ovation, and Jake's gonna make it regardless because Jake has that it factor people like i said earlier people just latch on to him he's he's a big guy he can work and now he can talk on the mic he's been working on his promos um 
But that's I, – I, I do wish I could get the microphone with the Daisy Hit Squad. I do love Gama's promos though. I think Gama is such a gem and he's so underrated and he's such just a master of old school and I love it. I love being around him. I love talking to him. I love his promos. People – when he comes out, he gets that go away heat. But by the time he's done talking, he gets that, man, we can't stand you heat because he gets them and he gets professional wrestling and I love it. But yes, I do. Raj can also cut a big promo. I know you're not sold on Raj yet. I listened to you and Trent on the Total Nonstop Impact um, review, which I, I always love listening to that. And I always love, you know, sharing it on Twitter. But I know you're not sold on him yet. And, and that's because he has to find his confidence as well. And he's getting there. He's getting better. But he's in his head like I was a lot of times when I first got there. But um, no, I wish I honestly could get the mic more. The one thing I love about Impact is when I do get the mic, they let me say what I want. That whole stuff when we were talking about Alicia Edwards, that was all off the cuff. That was all me. That was all Raj. That was all Gamma. We just went out there and said what we wanted to say, and they were cool with it, and I loved it. And I thought right there, you know, you saw a couple, a few tweets like, man, let these guys talk on the mic, let them talk on the mic, let them talk on the mic. I think if it ever happens, which you got to give me that microphone sooner or later, I am really going to up my stock in the company and people are going to be like, man, this dude is the real deal, which I don't think a lot of people believe that now. And I don't think a lot of people see that right now. So, you know, it is what it is. I'm just trying to be patient, but I'm also now I'm also trying to nudge a couple ideas because I obviously want to be something and someone in impact wrestling. I'm not there just to collect a check and be like, okay, I'm good with my spot on the card. I, I want to be somebody I'm working my ass off to be somebody. You know, I, I was saying on that episode, you're talking about that, you know, a couple things I, I had brought up the mic work that we haven't seen yet. And that there's more in the ring. I know that you can do that. I haven't seen yet. And by the way, that Jake something match at glory pro, I watched it on online because um, I think that was the main event. Wasn't he the champion at the time? Yes. Yep. Yeah. I, I watched it on YouTube. So um, that was actually a really good match. We do that everywhere we go. That's the funny thing. We do it everywhere we go. We just have such great chemistry. We're such good friends. And any interview and podcast, I always talk about him because, you know what I mean? That's my boy. And uh, But we do that everywhere. And I can't wait to do that on Impact TV. I honestly can't wait. Yeah, I was actually going to ask you about him. Uh and you pretty much answered everything I was <laughs> I was gonna say. <laughs> I don't need to say anything about him. People love him regardless. So right, right. <laughs> it's me that has the hard time getting over with people and relating to people for whatever reason. Him, he doesn't need to. I don't need to hype him up anymore. He'll be fine in the world of professional wrestling. It's me. I have to convince people that I am the diamond in the rough. You know what I mean? <laughs> Some people see it. Most people think, oh, this guy sucks. You know what I mean? They don't see it. And and then one of these days, everyone's going to be jumping on the bandwagon, and I'm, and I'm going to be kicking them off because I'm going to be like, screw you guys. You weren't there since day one. Now you want to jump on the bandwagon? I don't want you on my bandwagon. It's going to happen. Do you feel like with the, as I kind of saying earlier, the in-ring work and the uh, the mic work hasn't probably had the proper chance to shine yet, but looking back at the presentation and the delivery of the Hit Squad, do you feel like, and this is not me trying to bait you into talking about Impact Creative or anything like that. Oh, I understand. But do you think that when you guys initially debut that it could have, because I, I will tell you as a viewer myself, I was a little confused with, I don't really know what they're going with with the Desi Hit Squad. Like I was, it was just like you guys kind of came up out of nowhere. Um, I think you debuted as Rohit with, without any kind of mention yep. <laughs> by yeah. anything on Impact. You just showed up one day with a name change and, and nothing was said. But looking back at it, do you, do you think just the presentation, the initial, initial presentation and delivery could have been a little bit better? I do, and I've talked to guys about that in the creative, and it's nothing against creative, but I do think that they had a plan – and it didn't get executed the way they wanted it to. I mean, I showed up as a babyface on Impact when I was Rohit Raju. And then next thing you know, I was a heel when they brought in Gersinder, um, which I prefer to be a heel anyways. But I, I do think there was a missed opportunity. I felt like when Gersinder and I, we started getting a li we started getting some momentum. We had a lot of momentum when we jumped PD and... Um, Ishimori, and that I felt like when we lost to them, we lost a lot of momentum. 
And then, you know, the whole stuff with Gersinder, uh, the Loser Leaves, Desi Hit Squad thing, and then they bring in Raj. So it was almost like we had to start all over again. And what people don't realize is that all the tag teams, besides it maybe the Deaners, all the tag teams that are in Impact have been together way longer. So it took, like, like Gersinder and I were finally starting to gel, and then that was done. And now Raj and I have to kind of find a way to gel with each other as well. And it's just not as, and I'm not making any excuses, but it's just not, we're not going to be as, as great right off the bat as some of the more established actual tag teams. Um, I do feel like the Daisy Hit Squad could have been represented or maybe there could have been more done with us than what we are. I do think at some point we were booked into the ground. I think the stuff with the Deaners have, have, has breathed new life into the tag team. And plus, it, you know, it's, it's two teams that weren't really doing anything, and now we are. I think that's going to breathe new life. Um, I do think that. I do get frustrated at times, and I've talked to Creative. I had a long car ride with Petey Williams that I've, you know, I kind of vented to him. I've talked to Scott. You know, I've talked to these things, and we've, we've gone over it. I'm not going to get into detail because it's, you know, none of the business or any that, anything like that. But I have talked, and I have tried to see what I can do to raise the stock myself of the Daisy Head Squad and try to get, you know, be more of a credible team and not just a fodder team. You know, I've tried to to do what I can to make that happen. And I do think the stuff with the Deaners, people will see us in a different light because now, you know, we get that go away heat a lot of times. All oh, these guys suck. I don't want to see them, blah, 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 blah. But the stuff that we've been doing has been pretty good. And we've been busting butt to do it. And you're going to see some backstage stuff pretty soon. That's going to be great. At least in my eyes, I think it is. And there, it's something that we're actually being involved in and not just floating around. So hopefully that continues. I'll continue to pitch any ideas that I have for us to try to get us something in somewhere. Um, but it, it is. I, I think there, it could have been handled a lot better than what it was initially out of the gate. Yes, I do. I do believe that. You know what I really liked, and I, I don't know how much it hurt or didn't hurt, but I used to like when you guys first came on and Gama Singh would be hitting you guys uh, backstage. I think one time you guys won a match and you were celebrating, you and Gersinder, and he came and started beating you guys with a, a mop or something like that. A mop. We've been beat with a broom. We've been slapped. <laughs> um, I remember going over the promo when he was hitting us with the broom, and it hurt, and it was just like... Oh man, but that's you know that's cha cha, that's gamma, and it's it, it's a lot of it is very funny, and um, yeah, I st I I love working with gamma, man. I absolutely love it. I think it's we have such good chemistry together. I enjoy just like I said earlier, being around him and talking to him and listening to the old stories. I'm a huge old school wrestling fan, so being able to pick his brain and just being with him is it's amazing, man. People don't realize how great he really is and it's he's such a he's such a throwback and he's such a a gem of the lost age that people don't they don't realize how great he is it's a shame yeah that was another thing that when i talk about the initial presentation of the group that i wish i had a little more backstory on gama saying as i said you know he's done this and this and this but they just kind of say it in passing during you know don Cal's will throw it in there during the matches here and there but it would have been nice to get that nice you know backstory on him and everything he's accomplished no i i agree i i do feel like one of my favorite promos i can't remember if this made air or not i think it did it was when he talked when he was talking about everybody that he beat of course you know he comes from stampede so he was talking about, you know, he beat Brett, he beat Owen, he beat uh, Benoit, he beat all these guys, and the crowd was just like, boo! But it was so great because, you know, he did. He beat all these guys. He was there when these guys were just young pups. And uh, it, it's so funny to – that promo just killed me because it's true. It's honestly true, and people don't realize that. He's been in the ring with some of the greatest wrestlers of all time. And he's hung with them, you know what I mean? If not, he's helped them grow as well. So people don't realize how great the great Gamma actually is. I want to talk a little bit about 
again, the very beginning of the, the Daisy Hit Squad, you guys were initially announced on impactwrestling.com as a four-man group. Um, yourself, Gersinder Singh, Bupinder Singh, Avikas Kumar, and then, of course, led by Gama Singh. So the debut comes, and it's just you and Gersinder. And I think us as the viewers, the fans, we expected the other two guys to show up. They never did. Gersinder leaves the company, um, and I, I had assumed they were going to replace him, and I thought it'd be with one of those guys, and it wasn't. It was Raj. So w what can you tell me? This, this is something I'm actually really interested in because I don't know the answer. Um, about the current, you know, the initial makeup of the team to now, like, was there was there different plans? Because I think those other guys have been moved to the um, the alumni, the alumni section, right? I honestly have no clue what was the main. I, I I don't know. I was never clued in. I was never told, so I can't really comment on that. I was old, the only thing I ever knew that was permanent was myself and Gersinder and Gamma. I, I remember seeing the graphic for those guys. Um, I know Bupinder is still, you know, he's still really green, so he's still training. I actually teamed up with him at a show in Windsor last Saturday. He's coming along real well, um, but he's straight from India, you know, and he's new to the business. He looks like a million bucks. He's actually really great in the ring from what I saw him three months ago. So it's only a matter of time before we actually do see him on TV. I mean, the kid he the kid looks like a superstar. If you see him, he's jacked out of his mind, and uh, he looks great. His, his in-ring presence is great. He's just – his experience is all he needs now. Vikas, no idea what happened with that. Um, I think it was something that they had planned – and maybe it was supposed to happen and just didn't. I, I don't know. I was never told, so I can't honestly can't comment on that and, and, and let you know what was up with it. I just knew myself and Gersinder were always going to be a team. Uh, we trained together during the Global Force, and uh, we've known each other, you know, since then in the tryout. We've always got along, and I always said, hey, if I had a younger brother, it would look like him. And I still keep in, in contact with him. I love him. I think he's great. I think he looks like a million bucks as well. And sky's the limit for him. But, yeah, other than that, man, I had no idea. I had no idea what was going on. I just knew Gamo was coming in. I knew Gersinder was coming in. I had no idea who the other guys were at the time. And I had no idea why that fell apart, to be honest with you. It just it just never happened. Was there a um, – I know, obviously, Gersinder's re – he requested his release from the company um, – from what I understand, the if I'm not trying to get too much into backstage, but uh, there was, from what I understand, because I heard him on another podcast with a, a buddy of mine that he had some visa issues, and that was kind of the reason it broke you guys up. Uh, but was the plan for him to come back? Because I remember a couple one night only shows he teamed up with Raj, and then uh, I heard him and Bupinder wrestled an explosion match against the Deaners, but it won't be aired because he left the company. It actually aired. I'm pretty sure. Did I? I huh? I haven't seen that on the uh, explosion. It was. It was on explosion. I think. I thought that already aired. I. I knew there was visa issues. I don't know the just of that. You know, he never really got into the nitty gritty with me. Um, it, it came to a surprise to me when I saw that he asked us for release for his release, and he put that online. And I was like, dude, what is going on? Like, what? What? I just saw you like. A week ago, like what? What? How are you asking for your release already? So I, I don't know what the the fallout there was. I maybe he just didn't want to be patient and see. I, I have no idea. Maybe like with the visa issues because that stuff takes time. But um, I have no clue. I wish he had stayed because I think he would have been great. You know, he was already great. I think it would have been cool to have him come back. There's all types of stuff we would we could have done with him coming back and um. It just never, never happened. So I, I don't know what the miscommunication or the, the issues were between all those guys uh, or our him and management, but um, it's a bummer that he's gone, in my opinion. But best of luck to him. I hope he succeeds and with whatever he's trying to do. I used to really like him. Well, I mean, I guess I still do, but I, I liked him as a part of the Daisy Hit Squad quite a bit. I, I like the two of you together. Um, Me too. I enjoyed him. I, I honestly wish he had stayed. I, I always thought we could have done like a free bird thing. With all three of us, but, you know, I guess that's not going to happen. So what are the, some of the differences wrestling with him and now wrestling with Raj? Uh, Gersinder's more new school. Raj is more old school. Um, I, I, I think 
like if you look at the tag moves, the stuff that Grisinder and I did was more modern. And then if you look at the stuff that Raj and I do, it's more like Arn and Tully than anything. I can get down with either. Uh, I did like the tag move we did. I actually stole it from um, Jake and his old partner, the, which is funny. And I told him that and he laughed. But uh, I said, hey, man, we're going to do this move to you, uh, to Cody today. And he laughed about that. But, uh, um, yeah, we stole that from them, that double stomp flatliner deal. Uh, but, no, I think that's it. You know, Raj is more – he's classically trained. I think Bad News Brown, I believe, was his trainer. And then he's been training with Lance Storm for a little bit. But that would be the biggest difference. It's uh, old school, new, new school, old school, really. Yeah, the reason – it's taken a while for him to come around t- for me as a fan is just because I got so used to Gersinder and I don't know, as human beings, we don't like change. <laughs> so, yeah, that's true. You know, it, it's a, uh, it was, it was just tough for me because um I actually missed a, a, several episodes of impact. And all of a sudden I, uh, I, I got caught up, but all of a sudden I just saw, saw him one day. I was like, Whoa, what, what's going on here? And I had to, had to go back a few episodes and I, I saw what happened. You'd be surprised how many people have no clue. Like they all think, like, oh, they're the same, the same person. Like they will wrestle in Toronto together. They would wrestle in Toronto, but people would still tag me in it, like as if I was there. Or when Raj and I would have a match on Impact, they would still tag Grisinder. It's like, oh my God, you guys are clueless. Like, <laughs> like literally, like it's we don't look alike. Not like that much. It's like, man, really, and it, it, it's. It feeds that stereotype so badly, but it would kill us, man. We're like, man, that's not even, you know, he hasn't been on TV since Mexico, but they're <laughs> still tagging him in it. It's like, oh, my Lord. People sometimes just have, like, no, either no chill or just no clue. So one guy who isn't gone and is back is uh, Mahabali Shira. Um, have you had a chance to talk with him at all, and do you – do you first do you foresee yourself uh teaming with him in any way or competing against them or uh, have you had any, any dialogue with him at all I have not talked to him since I was you know training up in Windsor one time and he was there and then that was the last time I talked to him and then I heard he was coming back I don't know if he's going to be with us or against us no idea I'm sure we'll cross paths some shape or form, you know, uh, in the near future, however that will be. No clue what's going on with that. I don't know if they're going to want to have him be something totally different. No idea. I, I don't know. You know, I, I, I'm curious. I would always love some muscle for the team, but who knows? We might not get that at all. We might want him to join us, and he might not want to join, and then we might have to put him in the dirt. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> who knows what's going to happen? So, um, I, I, I figure, I know you guys called myself, I, I can't remember if it was you or Trent had said he's the captain of the team myself. I do feel like I am the captain of the team. I feel like I am the, the flagship, you know what I mean? I try to wave that flag with the, the Daisy hit squad, but, um, I, I don't know what's going to go happen with the big man. I don't know if he's going to be joining or we're going to be kicking his butt. I have no idea. All right. So that's going to be interesting to see. You are uh, getting ready to wrap it up here. You had your first, I believe this was your first pay per view match at uh, at Rebellion, and was it was with with Scarlet Bordeaux. So was that match? Did you know of it at the last minute, or because I know they kind of added it at the last minute, and then I know you got in a little heat with the big man <laughs> over some tweets. Yeah, that was funny. Um, yeah, last minute stuff, but uh, you know, I I was I was told to. Um, talk, talk that mess. So I just talk that mess the best way I can. And I always try to, when I do talk that mess, I try to make it as real as possible. And I, I felt like it was, cause it kind of was, it was kind of half, kind of not, you know, right. And, uh, cause I do want a t-shirt. I do want to be on a pay-per-view. I do want more for the Dizzy hit squad, but that's no news to anybody else. That's no news to management. That's no news to anybody. Um, because I'm not, vocal to to the point where I'm a, a jerk about it but I always ask like like I said earlier how do I raise help raise the stock of myself and the hit squad because I want to be more than what we are and um, that's what we're working towards man so but yeah man it was great I was very happy to be on a pay-per-view I, I saw that we had told I thought we told a very good story 
And you know, of course, I try not to read comments and reviews on stuff because people are going to hate you regardless and crap all over you because for some reason this generation is so toxic with its fan bases and any type of entertainment, whether it's wrestling, whether it's music, whether it's movies, whether it's comic books. People just hate to hate and just want to be obnoxious and toxic for whatever reason. Um, but no, I, I felt I'm my own worst critic, so no one has to tell me anything besides like I'll, I'll pick it apart. But I always love to hear the feedback and criticism from my peers. So I was very happy to be out there. I was very happy to tell a good story. I thought I did. I was very happy the heat that my tweet got. I always try and tell people, if you think that's bad, just give me a microphone because that's how I am. Right. And let me loose. And you know, I mean, you know how it is. Mm-hmm. And um, I was just very happy to be a part of that. I was very happy to be able to finally be on a big stage like that and show that I can honestly work with anybody. I can go out there and do a 10-minute exhibition-style match with Trey Miguel. Miguel or I can go out there and tell a story with Scarlett. So I thought that was it, it goes to my to me it just it's a testament to my ability to go out there and work with any human being whatsoever and put on a good match and tell a good story. So I hope that conveyed to people and I hope it opened up a few eyes in management. I hope it up a few eyes in the world of professional wrestling that I can go with anybody. So who knows? Maybe it didn't. Everyone likes to be sour about everything and dog everything, especially the Daisy Hit Squad, man. We get some of the worst heat of all time, but it is what it, it is. What it is. We also get some of the best heat of all time, too, um, which is fantastic. But, uh, you know, man, you know, I was very happy to be there. I'm very happy to be with Impact, and, um, you know, I, I just want to – I want more. Nobody goes into a job, at least anyone that's hungry doesn't go into a job and says, you know what, I'm good with this entry-level position. No, you always – if you're hungry, you want to move up, and that's exactly what I want to do. I want to move up. So, And that's what I tried to do. That's what I think I can do. Have you had any – um? so f- as far as the match with Scarlett, it kind of exceeded my expectations as a viewer because I wasn't – Impact is just now getting into intergender stuff, and I wasn't sure what to expect from it. I I figured um, she was going to be crawling under your legs while you're running at her, and kind of some of the silly stuff that we have seen on other wrestling shows. And you guys actually had a pretty competitive contest. Uh, have you? Is that your first intergender match, or do you have on the indies? Do you have a uh, experience with that? No, on the indies, I've had a couple. So um, I think it's it, if told right, I know it's so weird. Wrestling's so weird nowadays. The people are like, well, you have to have matches like this. Well, you can't have matches like that. Well, you have to do this. And to me, it's so subjective. I think there's a place for everything if done right. Now, who's to say it's right? Nobody, I guess, because everyone's going to sit there and argue about it. Everyone's going to sit there and argue about Joey Ryan. Everyone's going to sit there and argue about intergender matches. Everyone's going to sit there and argue about cruiserweights beating heavyweights. And just, it is what it is. But if you tell the story right, in my opinion, then it works. It's professional wrestling. It's a story. It's a sport, but it's also a story. And if you do it right, it works. I felt like we did it right. You know what I mean? She wasn't sitting there body slamming me and doing all this great choke slamming me and stuff like that it was an underdog fight which i thought we told that story so who knows man it's it's what i think is not what everybody else thinks and vice versa are am i wrong no are they wrong no i i think there's a very happy medium people just need to get their head out of their butt sometimes and realize that but uh no i i don't have any problem with it i thought I think it anything has its place if done correctly, I guess you could say. Has there ever been any dialogue about maybe bring a female onto the Daisy Hit Squad because there was a I don't remember her name for the life of me, but there was a female that wrestled on one of the one night only's uh big time wrestling in Northern California and she was Indian and I was like, "Man, I I I thought that would have been next level to bring her on and add her to the group." Was there any ever any talk of maybe adding a female? Nothing that I heard about, nothing to my knowledge. I know a lot of fans tweeted about it, um, but, you know, I have no stroke in that. So as far as I know, no clue. Could have been, 
Um, but I, I don't know. I don't know if that was ever in talks. I was never, like I said, I was never clued in if it was or wasn't. So, um, unfortunately, I couldn't. I couldn't tell you. I couldn't tell you at all. Last thing I want to ask you. You've already talked on Jake Diener, Jake something. Um, that big piece of trash. <laughs> the man looks like a professional wrestler. It's what I always say. He does. He does. Yeah, I've caught him at a few shows out here in Illinois. Um, I think uh, AAW he did, and I've got one of his shirts. But I, I wanted to ask you a little bit more about just the relationship with him and how far back you guys go and and everything. I think you may have posted um, on Instagram you guys were roommates at one point. Not roommates. We were. Oh no, that was a joke. Uh, we were at a movie and a buddy put, took a picture of us, and he said, "This fall, uh, <laughs> they're on different sides of the tracks." But now they're these two Impact stars are roommates, and it was like Jake Diener, Rohit Raju. How are they gonna get along? That was kind of the joke there. But I've known him for almost 15 years. We used, like I said, we were doing a backyard wrestling thing years ago, and him and his buddy came came along, and then we decided to get trained. He went to the Ring of Honor dojo. I went to a place that was local, and we've been best friends ever since we've traveled together all over the place there was a point in time where we kind of separated for a little bit i have no worries about him whatsoever oh we all, i always complain about myself because he's like man you're one of the best wrestlers i've ever seen i was like you're only saying that because you're my buddy he's like no i mean it but i do i know my worth i know my worth i think i'm a great wrestler i think i have a total package i mean i'm not six five six two six feet but uh, in this day and age, it doesn't matter. But man, I have charisma. I have more charisma than so many people. I have. I can talk on that mic. I look good. I can de deliver on the ring and stuff like that. For him, it's a little bit different. You know, he's a big guy. He instantly has that magnetic look. Pe he draws people to him. Not only that, but he's a great wrestler. Now he can talk on the microphone. He's been working on his promos. He knows himself. He's great with the Diener gimmick. It's only a matter of time before he blows up into the star that he should be. And I'm hoping that we get our chance. I'm hoping we get our KO and Sami Zayn feud. I hope we get that. I hope we get our Christopher Daniels, AJ Styles feud. I honestly hope we get that because I think we would honestly turn heads. We tell a great story in the ring together. I love the guy. He's my road dog. He's my homie. I love the fact that I'm kicking the crap out of him on impact wrestling right now <clears throat> i mean he's not touching me but you know you know all that doctored footage impact likes to put out but uh no man I, the fact that i'm having my first big feud and it's with him means the world to me and people don't even realize that it's like we've known each other for years we've traveled together for years we broke into the business together and for us when he got i was in the car when he got the call he was getting signed and it was almost like it was almost tears man because i was there and now he's there and we're there together and it's just it's awesome man i can't even explain it it's just it's so awesome man i love it i love it i know uh yeah i i, I saw you said something about a roommate and it sounded like you guys were currently roommates i was like i don't think your uh significant others would be cool with that so i was uh I thought maybe I was reading it wrong or something. I don't know, but um, uh, it was a joke post. <laughs> it's awesome. I know you guys go back um, really far. What? When are you uh, doing another Glory Bro show? Uh, July. What is it? July twenty eighth. Hold on. Let me see. Um, July twenty eighth. I face Danny Adams. It is a new Midwest title. Um, I think it was a Midwest title. Hold on, let me find out for sure because I don't want to butcher this. <laughs> I'm going to be hyping up the show. I slapped Danny Adams around and advanced in the tournament. So, um, yeah, Midwest Ter Territory Championship, open championship opening. So for the Midwest Territory Championship belt, 
If that doesn't scream NWA, if that doesn't scream old school, if that doesn't scream Hakeem Zayn, Rohit Raju, I don't know what does. Because <laughs> I'm going to go through there. You know, Danny Adams, it's his home territory. But good, he can lose it in his home territory. He ain't going to – he's not going to lose anything from that. At least he's losing to the next champion, the first ever Midwest Territory champion. So he'll be okay in that. And then whenever Nimrod comes next, I'm going to beat him. And then whenever Nimrod comes next, I'm going to beat him. And if it happens to be Jake something, I'm going to drop kick him and then double stomp him and pin him. And then when it's all said and done and the smoke – is cleared and every wrestling cliche that I could say passes on this freaking podcast. I'm going to be the next Midwest Territory heavyweight champion. And I'm going to hold the belt like Telly Blanchard in every single promo and cut old school 80s NWA style promos like only I can do, daddy. Only like I can do here. Like the American Jim Death the Rose. We were talking about it one time on this podcast with you. That's what I'm going to do. Like nobody else, man. Nobody else can do that. Not in this day and age, brother. I wish them they can try, but they can't. Hell yeah, I love it. And if people don't know about Glory Pro, that is a very hot indie promotion we got out here in uh, Southern Illinois. It does not fail every time you have a match. I'm out of town. I'm going to be out of town then too. It, it does not fail. Uh, killing me, bro. Oh You're God. killing me. Were you, on the, uh, were you on the card a month or two ago that had the Lucha Brothers there? Yes, yeah, you I, were. I messaged you. And Eddie, 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 uh, Eddie Kingston. Yeah, yeah. I um, God, I hot. wanted to see that. I um, I took my kids to meet the Lucha Brothers, but I had to catch a flight that night, so I couldn't stay for the show. And I was like, God, I can't, I can't catch a break. My girlfriend lives in California, back home, and uh, nice. We have a. <laughs> I always joke with her. Every time uh, I plan to go see her, there's always some wrestling show I'm missing or uh. Or something like that. Um, <laughs> but uh, I will be, I'll definitely be catching you soon. I, I'm actually off every Sunday. I just can't seem to line it up with um, my schedule with when you're going to be in town. But um, last thing, if you would plug your social media, and this is even for me, I was trying to tweet at you the other day, and for some reason you were not popping up. And I'm like, I, I must have something wrong here. <laughs> I still go under the old moniker at Hakeem Zane. That's H-A-K-I-M-Z-A-N-E. You can look me up on Facebook under Rohit Raju or the Mad Dragon Hakeem Zane. You type either in, I should pop up. And then on the good old gram, the good old Instagram, Raju Zane 80, you'll see all my pics, my gifs, gifs, that's how it's originally pronounced, <laughs> and of course... Um, hyping up all the sweet shows that I'm going to be on. Looking sweet. Mocha Skin Manimal, 100%. The most underrated wrestler in the world today. The most underrated wrestler, unwanted, on Impact Wrestling. But I'm there. I'm there doing my thing. So, yeah, you can catch me on there. And you can also catch matches and promos on YouTube. Just look me up. It'll be under Hakeem Zayn matches and promos. I'm constantly updating it with any footage that I have. If you have footage, tag me in it. Tweet me, whatever. Send it to me. I will retweet it, giving you the credit because I want the world to know that I am one of the greatest of all time. Just one of the most underrated.